Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. First of all, Merry Christmas to you all. Second, welcome to this exciting tutorial on 99 balls of fur. We're going to tackle this tutorial in parts. Number one, simple soft body setup. Number two, simple fur setup. Number three, challenges setting up fur for multiple soft bodies in separate top network. Number four, sourcing using point instancing. Number five, right way of multi soft body and fur setup in a single top network and a single solver. Number six, varied input sourcing setup. Number seven, fur refinement for rendering. Number eight, rendering with redshift. Number nine, conclusion. Obviously, you can tell there's a lot to go through. Before we proceed, this tutorial is completely free, but I will leave a link to project files in description. Please support me by purchasing them. I would very much appreciate it. Please also check my social platform links in the description. If this tutorial is helpful, please give me a like, comment, subscribe, and share. Without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, let's create a sphere by control clicking sphere here. So let's create that one for us. Now let's change this to vellum src, dive in. There's our sphere. I'm gonna move it to up in the Y position because I want it to fall down on the ground, okay? So let's uh, create a remesh and um, that's to change the polygons to triangles, okay? And I'm going to set the target size to 0 0.08 to give it a little bit of resolution. And let's put in a vellum configure cloth. I'm going to leave everything at default in this node here for now. Let's create a null. Connect it to there. Let's create another null. And connect it to the constraints. Okay, so this will be SBGL. And this will be SP con meaning soft body geometry, soft body constraints. Okay. Next, let me create a DOB network. I'm not going to use the SOP level vellum solver here because currently it doesn't have many options to play with. Uh, so I'm just going to skip that part. Let me call this SP sim and let's dive in. So we need a few items here vellum object okay vellum source vellum solver merge gravity force ground plane there you go okay so let's connect the vellum object to the objects to solve in vellum solver and then the pulse solve goes to vellum source Vellum solver goes to merge, merge goes to gravity, gravity goes to output, and ground plane goes to merge. Click on merge and press shift R to swap the inputs and go to the effector relationship and change it to mutual. Let's press L and H. Okay. To lay it out and set it to home. Okay. So let's dive into here on this side. Now if I select Vellum Source, let me rename this to um, SB source and here there's nothing connected at the moment so let's drop in the geometry in soft path and drop in the constraints in the constraint path it shows up here okay so that's good right let's run it then okay so that's what you get all right let's change the well, constraints properties now. So there are two stiffnesses here. One is stretch stiffness and another bend stiffness. I want to change the stress, stretch stiffness to 10 and the bend stiffness to 0 0.01. Okay? And let's run it again. There you go, that's a lot better, uh, but it behaves like a jello at the moment. Um, yeah, so let's 
energy or some damp in there or damping. So we're going to change the stretch damping ratio to 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.001. And then I'll move into the vellum solver itself. And we're going to introduce a velocity damping of 0 0.01. Okay. So it damps the velocity over time. Next, I'm going to put in four sub-steps because it stabilizes your simulation. Okay. So that's perfect. Let's see how that looks now. Okay, that is a lot better. That is good. Perfect. So let me get out of here, create a null, and call this as out as B set. Okay. Perfect. And out here, you can see both the ground plane and the sphere has come out. We don't want that. So I'm just going to type in vel asterisk to bring in just the vellum object. We will ignore the rest of them. Okay. So that's that. Good. Okay. Let's now create fur for this. Okay. So let me create a line here and uh, leave it as it is. And let's put in a resample. So when you put in a resample, you get a lot more points. Without it, that's it, two of them. Okay. And the two comes from here. Okay. So in resample, I want to uncheck maximum segment length and enable maximum segments. What that means is that you get 10 points out of this. But if you choose this, uh, depending on the length, this will be distributed across, okay? But I want to know how many points I'm putting in there, okay? That's all. And let's create a group, create. That copy, group, create. And let's go in closer. Okay, I'm going to type in here dollar $OS, meaning whatever we put in here will come up. So I'm going to call this pins. And if I middle click on the group name, it shows up as pins, okay? And this is going to be points, okay? And I'll type in base group as zero. As you can see, the one that is on the ground is the one that is selected for this, okay? Uh, if you were to select that not one, so it just moves up one. So there it is. So this is called pins group, okay? Next is copy to, copy to points. So what are we doing? We're copying these lines onto the geometry we've got here. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. And the lines will be copied to the points on this geometry. So wherever you see the points, that's where it'll be copied, right? So require ge geometry to copy there and the target points to copy to. There it is. There it is. And it looks uh, nothing like it's one meter in length. And that's because there is a problem with the P scale. So let's put in an attribute randomize. And I'm going to call this P scale. Ah. And let's type in P scale here. And suddenly it appears. It's a dimension, one dimension. And I'm going to give it a minimum value of 0.5 and 0.8. Give it a little bit of variation. Okay. But if I template this sphere now, as you can see, it's all facing upwards. That's because of the normal, okay? So let me put in a normal here and change this to points. There you go. That's a lot better, but it's still not what we want. And the reason that is happening is because of where the lines are facing. The lines, line is currently facing that way, okay? Which is in the X direction. So I'm going to transform this to face in the X direction. Okay, so if I look at that now, there you go. It's in the Z direction, sorry. Okay, so if you rotate it in the X, you get it in the Z direction. Now, there you go. It's all better. Disable, enable. Okay, that's looking good. All right, let's move on. Now I'm going to create a vellum configure here. 
Okay, good. Here, um, at the moment, all I want to do is enable the pins as our pin points. So you can see they are pinned to the sphere. Okay. And remember, it's important to understand that this already has animation coming in. Okay. So let's match the animation coming in for our um, hair. Okay. Or fur. All right. So let me just quickly create a camera here just so that we don't lose it. And uh, I'm going to create a null and then another null. And this one I'll call HRGO. And this one I'll call HRCON. Yeah. And I'm just going to copy these two and put it here. All right. So this one we'll call HRSIM. And this one will be HRSIM as well. Okay, good. So if I dive into here, we just need to change the SB source. Okay. So this is now going to be HRGL and HR constraint. As you can see, it showed up. Okay. So that is perfect. Everything else will stay the same for the moment. Okay. So let's run this. Um, actually, you know what? Let me create a merge here. We're going to merge and let's connect the sim from here and so from here, merge it so you can see the sphere behind it, okay? Right, let's press play. Okay, something is going on, and I'll show you why, okay? And if I push this to the X direction, I'll show you what is happening, not why. <laughs> so this is the positive X is that side, and negative X is that side, okay? I'm not sure why this is happening, I assume it is because of the transformation we did here, okay? But I, I don't know, I can't tell you. But let's try and fix this now, okay? So as you can see, that's what is happening. It's going crazy. So the first thing is here, in vellum hair constraints. You see here the uh, orientation pin type. If I change that to none, let's see if that uh, changes it. There you go. It's definitely improved it a lot which basically means that it's got a problem with its orientation um, due to its soft body nature, okay? Uh, not the hair's <laughs> nature, but where it is connected to, okay? So that's done now, all right? So the next thing is I also want to look at, um, let, let me just uh, enable this again, okay? So, right, so there you go. So you can see here, the hair's fine up there, but suddenly it's all going inside. It's gotten balled up there. And that's because it's not colliding properly with our sphere, okay? So we're gonna have to fix that. So let's try and increase the substeps to 10 for the moment and see how that works. It's gonna take a while, I think. Let's just put that one. It has not improved that, okay? And that's because it's colliding. There is just not enough, all right? So let's try to fix that now. So the best way to fix that, at least in my understanding, is creating a collision source up here to our incoming soft body simulation and inside the HR sim I'm going to create a static object and connect it to merge and push it up by uh, no static object static object there you go okay. just so that it's nice and neat all right because we changed the relationship to mutual it doesn't matter where it is but anyway so I'm going to bring this collision source here, okay? So now the collision source um, is there for the hair to collide with or the fur to collide with. Let's see if that has improved. Okay, so you've got a massive problem here, okay? And that is basically um, everything is just collapsing. 
The first thing is that I need to use deforming geometry and use object transform. Object transform is if you had any kind of transformation up here. We're not going to do this in this case because we're going to have a lot of trouble if you had transformation up here. We don't want that. All right. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to check that box anyway, uh, but it doesn't matter. Right. Let's try it again. Okay. So now the hair or the fur is moving with the ball or the, or the sphere is moving with the hair. But it's got a lot of issues here, as you can see. Okay. But regardless of the other issues, it seemed to have fixed our collision. I'm sorry, the problem with the hair going inside of the sphere. Okay. That's an important thing. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay. So there you go. Okay. So next thing is let's try and fix why that is happening. And I'll show you why that is happening, at least I think. Um, so if I go into Venom Solver here, if I disable collisions, and let's see what happens. You see, nothing is happening. So it is proof that the problem is with collision. Okay. Obviously, this is not good. But anyway, we, we do need collisions. Okay. But if you go into Collision tab, you have Initialize Overlap Distances. If I uncheck that, let's see what happens. It's behaving a lot better. It's still got a problem, but it's behaving a lot better. Okay. All right. So that's much better. It's currently sitting at 10 substeps. I don't want to go any further than that. Okay. Um, there's also one more fix, which is basically uh, not not the exact fix, but it's well, like if I bring the length down, let's say to 0.5, you'll see suddenly it's behaving a lot better as well. Slightly better, I guess. But you don't have to worry about any of this because we're not going to do our simulation using this method. Okay, I just want to show you this because this is typically how I approached it um, some time ago. So creating a soft body simulation first and then creating the fur or hair for that post simulation. Okay. Perfect. Okay, that is good. Um, just yeah, it still looks good in my opinion, um, except for the first part a little bit. Um, what else can I do? What else can I do here? All right, there's also one more thing here. It's update overlap distances. If I disable that, you'll see that it behaves a lot, lot better. However, then you will not have, um, you may not actually, you, you may lose the hair being present on top. Okay. See there again, it's going inside. Okay, we, we don't want that. The, ultimately, what we are trying to do is to achieve the hair not to go inside. This thing has completely destroyed it. All right, so that's why I don't want to do that. All right, good. Okay, so that is done now. Let's move on to the next one.